Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Colonization. This is post-commentary on the missions that were conducted during the live stream on January 17th. Just a reminder, this is all in the Realism Overhaul set of mods for Kerbal Space Program. So we're operating on Earth in the real solar system. The mod list is in the video description. At the beginning of this live stream, I actually covered the Jason 3 launch from SpaceX. And so I'll go with the original audio here. And this is minus one minute of video from SpaceX's website. And so there's their webcast of it. Rock confirm range is green. Vehicle in the startup mode. Rock range green. 40 seconds. Rock confirm range is green. Rock range green. T minus 30 seconds. What's that sound? Minus minus audio is both of them. I've got NASA and SpaceX audio going, but we're watching the SpaceX 18. one. You can see by the corner, SpaceX. T minus 20 seconds. 10, 9, Hold on, I think 8, NASA 7, audio is off. 6, 5, 4, I'm going with SpaceX. 3, 2, 1, 0. Stage 1 ascent burn. Lift off of the Falcon 9. NASA was 10 seconds off. GC moved to section 57, post launch pad operations, to secure on net A. GC to section 57, post launch operations. Your stage propulsion nominal. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Let me just quickly. NASA's got a better image. Oh, wait. Now uh, SpaceX does. First stage, PU is active. Copy that. At least this time they decided to go with the camera instead of those guys in the mission control. F9 power nominal. Let's see what NASA NASA's got that NASA's got an uh Falcon this image. Telemetry nominal. Clear the launch pad wow. at Vandenberg Air Force Vandenberg Air Force Base to live in the Jason 3 spacecraft to a circular orbit about the recovery platform of the US. Kilometers per hour. Well, if you want any conversion help, I can sell you. <laughs> tell me if you want miles an hour or meters per second. Vehicle is just transitioning into the supersonic regime. Vanberg Air Force Place. Okay. The speed of sound right now, and shortly we're going to reach max Q or the maximum aerodynamic pressure. It's one of the highest stress states on the rocket. First stage propulsion remains nominal. Okay, uh, well, NASA is not any better right now. This burn will last for about another minute or so. Falcon 9 power and Yeah, meters per second, just by our stage separation. divide by 3.6, that's right. And that chill has started. They, they are launching out of Vandenberg Air Force Base. Liquid oxygen through it, and that is actually a view from the thermal imager on the left side of the safe second stage. Vehicle is supersonic. Right, so well, it was supersonic a while ago, guys. <laughs> Man, it is going past a thousand meters per second. It's past Mach 3 now. It reaches supersonic at T plus one minute or so. Usually max Q is like one minute and eight seconds. Let's talk a little bit about the orbital mechanics that we're going to be doing today. So for those of you that follow our launches on a regular basis, NASA is hopeless. Um, we I'm just going to stop the NASA stream. From Cape Canaveral. And like we said before, we launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base. So that was confirmation that we had a successful... Uh, I think they have quite a crowd today still. Very excited. This is a fantastic milestone. Booster has been deployed. We had visual confirmation of... Super, super sun. Yeah. As you can see in your stream right now, the MBAC engine... Definitely hypersonic now. It's on its way to our parking orbit before we get to yeah. polar. So the two views that you have on your camera there, um, the one that you see right now, or just had there, there, that's uh, our infrared camera. That'll show um, oh, shades of gray to uh, display where the thermal dispersion is across the bell of the second stage. And then the other view Ooh. is a stage visual TV. camera. Oh, we're actually looking at the so, fairing deploy right now. She's all right, coming so we're just, just waiting for fairing to deploy. Uh, all right. And we have a successful fairing. 
deployment. That's fantastic. All right, that's great. These are all really important steps. This Too hardcore. Here, so that is second stage pulling away from planet Earth. This is one of my personal favorites that we get to see. You can see that MVAC engine belt glowing hot with the exhaust gases. I mean, yes, we're headed to so down. excited to see what happens. And just to reemphasize, this is uh, this is a test. Yeah, like that's what I was talking about. Putting a camera on the first stage might be a little bit hard to do that. We would like to see what the first stage is doing, obviously. But I guess it's a little bit difficult. Made some big landing legs last night. Yeah, I saw what Rover Dude was doing. Keep in mind that nobody's um, actually though I noticed his big landing legs so when they uh, folded up away, tended to so clip with something at the top, now, so I don't know how he's going to fix that. Well, you definitely don't need more boosters while landing, Peach Reaper. Wow, the second stage is really picking up now. It's getting to orbit. It's at the high thrust weight ratio portion of its burn. We're already past where they said the experimental landing was supposed to happen. At this moment in time. So, so just repeat as the drone ship as the rocket approaches the drone ship. Stage one landing legs have deployed. Seek one. Landing legs have deployed. Stand. Looks like we should Come be on. It video feed. Legs have deployed. Hey, hey, so hey! Confirmation that we've had that's not just you. That's me too. They're not. So hey. Entering the coast phase. Again, just waiting for a Falcon. It's the feed itself. It's not. On, it's uh, not anything else. You can see in the corner. It's uh, so the, the second stage but, stuff uh, is still ticking down. It's their their video <laughs> is not reminder, this is working. Miles away. There's no Wi-Fi, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, they're they're making so excuses the now. We have the last you heard them. Uh, no Wi-Fi, unfortunately. Uh, they're uh, they're making excuses for defeat. Come on. Okay, so we're just waiting for information here. Um, I'll keep the. Audio on, and I'm gonna proceed with my KSPing. I think that didn't sound right. And what happened with that launch, of course, is that one of the landing legs collapsed. Uh, it made it to the bars just fine and sit down at a nice soft touchdown speed, but one of the landing legs wasn't locked properly, and so the rocket collapsed and exploded. But anyway, uh, here I'm going to launch my own little Falcon 9 uh, with a uh, with a test payload, a fuel canister. And the goal of this is to test a KOS script that's meant to launch any two-stage rocket without boosters. So, two-stage to orbit, any rocket. And so here's me trying to go over the script with people uh, in Notepad++. And uh, a lot of tweaks have been made to this. I'm happy to report that I've made enough tweaks now after, after this uh, stream that it does seem to work quite well. Uh, but we will have some problems during this stream because it wasn't perfect here. Anyway, so, uh, well, it's still not perfect, by the way. It doesn't get to the target apoapsis and periapsis. It seems very good at delivering rockets or payload to 300 by 220 kilometers or so. Uh, <laughs> it seems to like that those numbers just fine. Other numbers, not so much. But the goal of this is you just type in the thrust weight ratios of your rocket, the first thrust weight ratio, the second thrust weight ratio, and then the final thrust weight ratio, and then Hopefully you'll get it to, well, 300 by 220. Uh, so here we go. And again, dummy payload, and you can see KOS running over there. But I decided to uh, try to use Telemachus to sort of sort of mimic the SpaceX launch thing. I really need to put a camera on the rocket itself to do it justice. But there you go. You can see the altitude, surface velocity, etc. And here we have first stage out, separation, and ignition of the second stage. Thankfully, a little bit faster than SpaceX has it because with the engine, the fuel ullage simulation, it tends to have feed problems very quickly, much more quickly than is realistic, I think. But anyway, fairing separation. There we go. But there we go. The Merlin vacuum engine doing its job. Lots of delta V left. And it needs all of it. Well, it doesn't actually need all of it. It'll uh, probably have about 1,200 to spare at the end. There I'm explaining that I've been thinking about how to implement a way to use the time to apoapsis in the equations for the launch. And I fixed that. I've, I've managed to incorporate that, uh, that number in. Uh, but at that point, I had uh, commented out a line that was supposed to do that because it wasn't working right. Now down the road, if I can get a lot of KOS scripts under my belt and a lot of practice with it, I would like to create a script to land the, the first stage of the Falcon 9 and other rockets, uh, a generic script to land them. Uh, but obviously it's a little bit more difficult in realism overhaul than in stock, 
because you don't have fully throttling engines, you don't have infinite ignitions, and you have the other stuff to worry about, uh, though really with the Falcon 9 they, they should have it pressure fed and so it shouldn't be a problem. Anyway, I aborted the program there because I wanted to deorbit the second stage. I was pretty confident that I was going to get it into orbit. It had the feel. It didn't have as much fuel as I thought it would. Then again, it is carrying the max payload for this rocket. Uh, the payload capacity for Falcon 9 FT is like um, about 14 tons or so. And so we'll separate the payload here, which is the fuel canister, and we'll see how much it has. 13.35 uh, tons. So it's certainly more than a Dragon capsule. Anyway, so off it goes. And it's just got uh, four uh, two kilonewton thrusters on it. This is all it has. And then, of course, a lot of RCS. And it's just got to wait for something that wants to dock with it. It's an emergency fuel supply. But it does need to make it to orbit. And so we'll use those two kilonewton thrusters to do that. So like I said, I've uh, developed this script further. And it seems to work for, well all of my normal type of rockets. I don't know, some of you could probably create rockets that would bust it, but so far it's done a pretty good job on a full range of different kinds of rockets, including my shuttle, which isn't even a proper two-stage rocket. Uh, now the shuttle does have boosters, but those boosters are separated using smart parts instead of in the KOS script. And the reason for that is because uh, it's hard to generically predict what, what fuel the boosters have in them. And so it adds a lot to the script if you're gonna have to check for all sorts of different fuels in the boosters and stuff like that. And I'd have to try and figure that out. The next thing I did was of course test the script with a different rocket. This is the Kingfisher which has a 20 ton to orbit capacity. And this was used to launch the Halcyon capsule. So here we go. It has an M1 sea level variant on the bottom and then the J2X as the second stage. So a much more powerful rocket, uh, fully hydrolox, fairly light, I mean it's actually I think lighter than the Falcon 9, at least the Falcon 9 FT, but that's because of the light fuels. Now the trouble with this is it's got a long low thrust to weight ratio upper stage compared to the Falcon 9's relatively high thrust to weight ratio, at least closer to the end it has a high thrust to weight ratio. This rocket was designed to never go above about 3.5 G's. So here we go, getting ready for first stage shutdown. There we are. Separation and ignition of the J2X. Now I should remind you that the video is being sped up a bit to match real time. This is not how it actually ran. Uh, so I will point that out. I've been working on getting my performance a little bit better. Um, Turns out there was a bottleneck in terms of virtual memory, and so I think I'll get somewhat better performance. Also, I've decided to use different mods for certain rockets and switch out from LazTech. I've upgraded the series to 1.0.5 recently, and so other improvements are forthcoming. Now this launch is obviously not going right because we are approaching Apoapsis at 150 kilometers. We should obviously be much higher than that. So I try to adjust that line there with the final pitch being less sensitive to the second thrust weight ratio to see if that works out for us. Um, well, here it goes. I think you can guess the result. It takes a lot more than just adding a square there to fix a problem like this. Anyway, off with the Kingfisher again with its uh, 20 ton fuel canister. I've also been testing out the 64-bit hack with the stuff in this series, so I basically copied this series folder and put the appropriate stuff in there to make it work with 64-bit, which is dodgy, but um, it seemed to work out quite nicely, in fact. Uh, the thing is that when the memory starts getting close to the 32-bit cap, you know, uh, 4 gigabytes, well, it's really 3.5 gigabytes or so, um, the, in OpenGL mode, your video memory is fully loaded. It tries to get stuff into the video memory first, that's why OpenGL mode uses less memory. Your video memory is much faster than your main system memory. And so as that gets filled up and when you get close to the uh, close to the cap, it starts to lag because uh, you've maxed out all your memory and it's trying to stuff stuff in, uh, in 
lower quality memory and just try and dump stuff where it's not supposed to dump stuff. So yeah, you tend to get lag there and of course having the 64-bit hack means that you don't reach that cap. Uh, it doesn't try to squeeze stuff in the same way. And it doesn't overburden the video memory. The video memory is free to take the textures or whatever that it needs to. Okay, so uh, here we are, and you can see we've passed Apoapsis, and we are only at 162 kilometers, and that's obviously not good enough. So I'll have to do more work on it. It was an improvement, but not good enough. During the launch, you might have noticed me checking on the life support and also alarm clock to see what we had to do next. And what I concluded was that we had to get Moon Chaser into dock with uh, Skynest because it didn't have enough supplies if we wanted to continue on with the other activities we needed to do with our Mars missions. We needed to do make course plane changes and Moon Chaser would run out of supplies if we tried to do those right now because we have to time warp like 80 days or so. So here's the rendezvous of Moon Chaser with Sky Nest, and this is the main rendezvous burn. You can see our closest approach distance up there diminishing. Everything seems alright. It began in the same rough orbit, remember. Everything's sort of in the same orbit as Sky Nest anyway, so it didn't have to fix inclination or anything difficult like that. So here, very good approach distance. Uh, of course, it's a little bit laggy coming close to Sky Nest, and I was probably hitting the RAM limit here as well. So, it was having trouble deciding how to manage things. Obviously, I dealt with it, I deal with it all the time, but I didn't want to bore my viewers to death, and unfortunately, that's really what was going on here. Uh, no avoiding that, at least we had good music, but yeah, so I, I am working on it, and trying my best, and I think I've got some solutions. Okay, well, uh, here it goes, and you can see the situation. Actually, uh, somebody had mentioned that FAR does not like that rotating section on Skynest, so that's probably adding to my woes here. Definitely. But uh, you gotta have rotating sections, right? I mean, the crew has to exercise and all, get some artificial G's in. You would think. Okay, getting close here. No magnetism, of course, so let's be right on. Is it there yet? Are we there yet? There we are. Okay, and actually Moon Chase is pretty big compared to the station when you look at it like that. Yeah, it seems pretty small on top of Falcon 9, but it's pretty big compared to this this contraption. Okay, so then we were free to move on, on to our Mars probes, starting with the Mono Propaganda BMW from viewer Dial Lord Root. And so here I set out to make its transfer. Unfortunately, all of the liquid oxygen had boiled off. So even though I thought I was safe with li liquid methane and liquid oxygen instead of hydrogen, we lost all the liquid oxygen. You can see the gap between the liquid oxygen and the liquid methane. Uh, that was that was bad. So we didn't have as much delta V as I expected. And well, I had to use the... It, it actually has a little aerosene N204 section there attached to the stage. So. Unfortunately, I didn't stage the methane oxygen tank separately, which would have been a good idea in this case. Because then we wouldn't have to carry the liquid methane. But anyway, it worked out here for this mid-course plane change. The problem is the next bit. Now, uh, Dalla Root said I could use the probe's own fuel to make orbit. The trouble is that orbit, as it turns out, took a lot more than I could have imagined. Now, that means that we're going to have to probably try to aerobrake. I mean, you can see about 2,300 meters per second there. Uh, even the probe doesn't have that much. So, yeah, we're going to have to aerobrake a bit with that probe. Here is the Mars Pair. And the Mars Pair had a hydrogen burning engine, and somehow it managed to have fuel left over. Don't ask me how this happens. Oh, I know how it happens. It's because when you're, when you're not tuned into the probe, it doesn't have boil off. It only has boil off when you're focused on the probe. So I time warped with the Ma Propaganda BMW and not the Mars pair. So the boil off happened with that probe and not this one. So it's still this one still had hydrogen and oxygen left over. I'm looking at a zero boil off solution to get rid of that issue. In other words, some system that consumes electric charge in exchange for cooling the tank so it doesn't have boil off. 
and I think that'd be fair so that uh, it'll be consistent with the stuff that doesn't have I mean when we time warp and all that anyway uh, here I have a staging between the hydrolock stage and the erosine stage but I couldn't do the staging because I would get rid of my antenna and lose lose communication so I had to keep the stages attached and it's a good thing that I kept the little thrusters the Gemini advanced Gemini lander engines that burn the erosine uh, radial so that they could burn with the other stage attached that was uh, a lucky break for me so we managed to maintain communication and it looks like we may have enough Delta V to manually get into orbit with this we'll see once we get there though our final Mars probe is this long-range Mars communication relay and this is from Bluegill Bronco 2 another viewer the the one that uh, I made was the Mars pair so uh, actually I made the transfer stages on this as well and I made them to fit the Falcon 9 that's why that one is shaped a little bit weird and it still had hydrolocks left over and so I used that and in this case there's no problem staging and moving on to the next engine which is the SS engine burning MMH and N204 uh, however we do have the the delay I haven't shown it on the other rockets but uh, we do have a two minute delay here and that was especially annoying here because I forgot to unlock that tank so we had to wait another two minutes before actually igniting the engine I think that for the sake of live broadcasts I may turn off signal delay um, it, again it's for the sake of viewers so yeah I think it'll be a good idea and we need to get more done in this series anyway we haven't really gotten into colonizing things yet uh, so it's been a little bit plodding and anything we can do to move things along would be helpful and the dealing with signal delay is not gonna help I've already gotten pleas to uh, get rid of remote tech entirely I'm not too sure I want to go that far but uh, maybe signal delay is a step too far for this okay anyway there you go we're getting a nice little Mars approach and the specifications for this probe was that it needs to get into an equatorial orbit or close to it so uh, I try and get as close as possible right away we'll have to perhaps make adjustments once we get into Mars SOI okay so that's all set and I add that alarm to the rest of them and you can see when they all approach about 205 to uh, to 241 days so we've got a while before we deal with them again in Mars SOI now I noticed that the shuttle was losing food water and oxygen and now when, it's, when I say losing it uh, it actually still had about 20 days left so I moved the supplies from its uh, current supply pod and actually we had a huge oversupply of water uh, I think it's because of a recycling unit or something oh uh, maybe the fuel cells I think it was the fuel cells because the shell is running on fuel cells that's why you have an oversupply of water okay so I moved the little supply pod out and we have to deorbit it and that's why I'm gonna conclude this episode with the destruction of this little this little uh, I forget what I call it Ah, I just checked and this is the picnic basket. That's what it was called. It was launched on an Atlas V. So we deorbit the picnic basket. Obviously it's not meant to survive re-entry, so we'll get explosions to conclude. And uh, then we'll leave it there. So here we go, going through the atmosphere. I, I was wondering if uh, somehow the heating would surprise us and actually allow this to survive. Instead, what we got was actually a magnificent series of explosions. Um, so, here we go. Okay, uh, so that was one of the supply tanks, and our engines are floating away. But it sort of took the picnic basket one step at a time here. Yeah, there you go. The, and the thrusters all seem to float away. Still, uh, that bit left? No, no, it's not done yet. Still not done yet. Still not done yet. Now it's done. So with that planned destruction, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.